nityanandam paramasgadam kevalam jnanamurtim mungatitam gavina shudasham tutvamasya rilaksham etam nityam vimalam achalam sarvadi sakshi bhutam bhavatitam triguna rahitam sadgurum dhannamami nityanandam Hi, this is Manitya Ovyananda. Thanks for joining me again today. Now it's March, and March is winding down very, very quickly. Uh, today is Friday, March 30th, and we have one more day of March after today. And it is the month of the Living Enlightenment uh, anniversary, which was on March 3rd. So most of the month I've been reading out uh, different excerpts from the beautiful Living Enlightenment book. So today I'm going to just pick any any page that Swamiji feels like showing us and I'm going to share it with you today. Uh, let's get the most of it. We only have one more day of this amazing celebration of this deity, this living book, this living energy. So let's see today what we have. Okay. So when my, my eyes first opened on this, is page 610, and it says the musical magic. That's where my eyes first laid on, sort of in the middle of this chapter. And I'm going to go ahead and read it out. I have no idea what it's about, so we'll, we'll see what happens here. When the great musical saints like Tyagaraja, Anamacharya, and Manik, Manik Bhaskara, I don't think that's correct. Let me take a look at this. Manika Vasagar from South India sang spontaneous verses. They expressed their own experience of enlightenment. Traditional Indian music is designed for meditation for enlightenment. Classical Indian dance is designed for enlightenment. That is why the person who performs and the person who sits and experiences both experience that same meditative space. I have to stop here already. See, I've always loved music and different kinds of music and how they bring a mood. And we all know there's something special about traditional Indian music and there's many different types uh, from Carnatic music to uh, different devotional music and of course the music like that's, you know, the chanting, you know, even the modern kind of music like Christian Das and those types in Uma. Um, then you have that, the Taraja music uh, the sitar, all those things are so amazing. And uh, it's always brought me to another place when I used to hear that music before. And then the dance, Indian dance, traditional dance. You know, we have a group of traditional dancers as part of our uh, order of sannyasis. And they're so amazing. They get into that, that dance, that mood of the time, that leela, the story they're telling. And it puts people into that spirit, you know, of understanding the life of the, how things were, how things are, the Vedic sciences, the, the gods and the deities. And uh, it's just beautiful. It's a be beautiful poetry almost, uh, the dancing. It's very expressive and uh, energetic. And uh, it's really amazing. So, and I've kind of uh, noticed throughout my whole life various music and how it puts me into different moods or different times. A certain music would take me back somewhere else, you know, that I couldn't necessarily describe. And I think it is because of music that I had my first sort of understanding that there are multiple lives, that this is not the only life. Because I don't think I heard about reincarnation or past lives, you know, when I was 10, 12 years old. But when I heard certain music, like certain middle, middle age music, like with the recorder or certain of that kind of music, that ancient um, Baroque music, that kind of music, and then also traditional Irish music. Certain music I was exposed to at that time brought a certain mood inside of me, a certain feeling or an emotion, and it brought me back to that feeling of that I, m I must have lived during that time, during some time uh, in those eras. That's kind of how I felt at the time without it ever being taught about reincarnation or, you know, past lives and all. So it's not only until I'm really learning about Hinduism and understanding about Hinduism and getting the experiences of Hinduism in past lives from Swamiji and from readings from Kalabharava, from the Akashic readings, 
I didn't understand any of that. But as a young uh, kid, I music was sort of that link for me, that link to other planes uh, in certain other music that I would like, and especially world music. I always had a close connection with many different types of world music, traditional music. And I mean, I was very eclectic. I liked everything from alternative to classic rock, uh, even some folk and uh, uh, like bluegrass and pretty much anything except country. And I didn't care for rap much. But you know, certain classical music, not so much the modern classical, but Baroque music. And you know, any kind of those ancient, uh, Academy of Ancient Music, I think that was one uh, group that I really enjoyed their music. So I, uh, music was always part of my life in that way, where I was continuously listening to different music, uh, and especially world music. I really loved it. But because of those reasons, you know, and anything creative I would like to do always would involve music. It would put me in a certain space where something would express from that. So uh, maybe I can explore that a little bit more moving forward. But <clears throat> I, I just thought it's interesting. That's what came to mind when I'm reading this, because music is magic. And there is a power behind music. That's also why it's important what kind of music you listen to. Because some of the music I used to listen to in high school was very depressive. Uh, and put me into that mood, you know, of kind of already you're a teenager and in sort of a, kind of a psychological ups and downs and emotional, you know, roller coaster. And then listening to that kind of music, you know, I think it was like The Cure and, you know, some of those kind of bands. Oh, I survived somehow. <laughs> but when I look back, my God, how I survived that, I don't know. Swamiji must have been with me also then, that's for sure. So whatever reason I went through that, and I had to. But music has a power, and that's why I'm saying, you know, pay attention to what music you're listening to, because you're imbibing that. You're imbibing those lyrics, the intention, the context behind what the artists are saying or playing. So in any kind of uh, positive thought-provoking music will be great for you and very positive but if you start listening to country music and about how your love has left you and have another beer well then you might have a little bit of a different outlook on life so pay attention to that because as we know as we've talked about words have power so the words you're giving to yourself inside of you and outside so the words coming into your ears are going inside of you so see how that affects you and try to move towards music that will stir your soul, that will wake you up. For instance, traditional Indian spiritual music, uh, that's one. But there's a lot of beautiful Native American music and other kind of instrumental music that uh, can help put you in a nice meditative mood uh, to start to get you into that space of connecting to your consciousness. So let's read a little further here and see what Swamiji says. Um, you, you can enter the very space from which any music is created. Hey, uh, if it comes out of the space of the heart, you too will fall into the heart. If it comes out of lust, you too will experience lust. The state of mind of the musician plays an important role in impacting your mind. And I'm telling you, I swear, I did not read this. I had no idea, but it was in line and exactly what I was explaining. That's great, Swamiji. Anyway, when you listen to any music, be receptive. Don't bother about the words or the notes. Go into the core of it. Just relax with that music and try to see the thread, the backbone, the composite, central sound. Suddenly you will see you are experiencing the same thing from where the expression came out. Understand the expression comes from enlightenment. I'm sorry. It says, understand if the expression comes from enlightenment, it will lead to enlightenment. So that's why I'm saying you can have beautiful spiritual experiences with the right music. You can go to iTunes and so many different places now and get amazing Indian music. Um, that beautiful Raja music or the Carnatic music with that singing in the throat uh, when they sing those devotional songs and the, the Bengali devotional songs, the Kali and all of the chanting like Rudra, any kind of Sanskrit chanting uh, will really is really great for cleansing yourself, getting the energy moving and really getting into the conscious space because this, the Sanskrit words have that power, that energy behind them uh, in the syllables and in the sounds themselves. So if you look up Rudram uh, and try to get an authentic Rudram without any like background music or anything, uh, there's a couple, I don't know the name now, but um, it's very powerful to listen to the Rudram. 
um, and you can really uh, get into an elevated state of consciousness by sitting and listening to that and it's a very positive uh, action for you to do so again if you want to experience the higher states pay attention to how you listen to the music but keep in mind the space in which the artists and musicians were in or are in and the context from which they're coming from will affect you so that's why I'm saying be aware of what music you're listening to and who and what is the context so I hope you enjoyed today's session uh, and if you have any comments or experiences with music and how it's expect, uh, affected your life and how now after thinking about this maybe something has changed in you I would love to hear about it so please feel free to make comments uh, below the video in the comments field thanks so much